Hey guys, so on our last couple of videos we talked about squat mobility, uh, working on the hip you have, preventing you from getting in a good squat position. In the last video we talked about what a good position looks like. So that's their technique they so can work on to improve the way that you squat the way that you move. So today we're going to talk about three assistance exercises that if you have issues in your squat where you feel like you have a muscular weakness and balance is preventing you from moving the right way, these are some things you probably haven't seen. That. I'm here with Mike Lesby, who you guys know from the last couple videos, and Dr. Dominic Morris, who is uh, competing at Charmian Nationals this year and also a professor at Trinity University here in San Antonio. We're uh, crashing heavy metal fitness at their new location in San Antonio. It's an awesome place. Uh, I don't know if y'all can see from, from the video right here, but they have a ton of equipment. They're getting new stuff in from the league FPS, which y'all know I'm a fan of. So we're going to take that out to show you guys some new stuff that we hope is really helpful. So, first exercise is going to be one to address the knee caving issues that I've been having. If you guys can go check out my last video to see some of those. But this is a pretty simple exercise. Basically, it's a one-legged goblet squat, but I've got a band around my knee, and I Lead FPS light band. It's actually quite a bit of tension on my knee. I've got to go down on it. But this, with the band out on the side like this, this is going to be making my me use my adductors a lot more to keep my knee aligned over my toe. So grab a dumbbell again. This not too heavy. 25 pounds. One legged, a little bit of balance. And I'm just going to try and do a squat, go down as low as I can while keeping my torso upright. As you can see, I'm not great at it. Very difficult. Holy shit. But, if you get better at it, you use a little bit of lighter bands, lighter weight, it's really, really helpful for getting everything in, kind of this lower posterior chain, quad, even kind of your lower leg, all that firing, right? And if you do it that way, you can also bring the band across your body, so that it's pulling your knee in. That way, instead of getting those adductors working, you're getting more of those glutes, the hamstrings, uh, and the rest of your posterior chain. Really have to fight really hard to keep your knee out as opposed to keep your knee in. In either case, you always have your knee still, you're still tracking over the foot, right? You don't want it to go out too far like this. You certainly don't want it caving like this, right? The band's pulling in. So again, I'm gonna try the same thing. It's a little bit more difficult because the band's in the way, but you know, I try. Ooh, I'm not warmed up now, y'all. <laughs> And you can see, step a little bit closer to the band, a little bit tight, less tension, a little bit easier to stay in that good, good track position. But it's still hard, you can probably see my knees wobbling a little bit. It's hard, I have to fight, fight. You guys have any tips? Yeah, uh, it's hard. So, let me give you the dumbbell. Alright, so now I gotta do it. Okay. Uh, so, the only thing I'll add to what Ben was saying is, uh, especially if you're doing it uh, the second way you showed, uh, with the band kind of, you know, this thing trying to pull the knee inward, that's gonna be activating your adductors, your foot beat in particular. So, the one thing I'll tell Ben is that coming up from the squat, think about that extension of the hip, really squeezing and finishing with a neutral spine as opposed to keeping your hip flexed like so. Instead of finishing here, think, get that little bit of squeeze and extension, especially if what you're looking to do is turn on and get the glute to fire. You really want to get that mind-body connection as quickly as possible or, uh, by really thinking about it. And that's, that's what the band does. It gives you that kind of kinesthetic feedback uh, and forces your body to engage that area. Uh, the other thing that I like to show real quick, a variation of it, that it, if you don't have a big ass squat, like, uh, you know, our friend Ben here, you don't have the strength. Three weeks out. You need to step on stage for this. And you, you can't, you don't have the, the strength to get that low in a squat. What you can do is you can change it to a box squat. So with the band still around, with the, with the dumbbell goblet position, you can actually sit back on the box. Which will actually transfer the work to your posterior a little bit more anyways, make it more of a hip dominant movement. If that's what you're doing, you're still finishing with that good punch. Sitting back, always think about keeping that torso as vertical, just like Ben was saying, uh, throughout the movement. Nice. Alright, so another exercise that has really helped me out a lot with um, really recruiting my glutes, feeling my bracing work, and actually feel my glutes and low back all work together, is actually using my power board, which is really my Chuck Rogan board. So, I didn't come up with this myself, I actually saw some. 
what I thought, holy shit, that is lit, as the kids say. So, um, as phallic as this is going to be, I'm going to get Ben to uh, sheath me, if you will. <laughs> it, feels, it feels so good. <laughs> so, essentially, right, so I'm a pretty strong man, and what's really uh, something I've struggled with in the past is making sure that I have a relatively neutral spine, yet still being able to recruit everything I need in the back of me. So this is going to really emulate maybe a long clean, or maybe uh, loading a stone, or any type of load, in, in a sense. So, you know, you can really load this up. Um, I mean, I'm not really strong back there, but I had three of these on the other day. But you're here, I'm braced hard, right? You might need to put something here for your cubic bones and crit sometimes. But ultimately, I'm back, and I'm really making sure that, boom, I sit down once, I'm in a great position to, boom, be here. And all that is, you can see how I'm, I can launch the stone how I want it to do. Ultimately, I can clean the log, but boom, I'm... And then you've got a beautiful target in front of you like Ben. This really helps to bust it even harder. But um, it's really been, it, it's really helpful. I feel my outer hamstrings like I should. It even helps me think about how my feet should feel in the ground as well. I'm doing everything I can to boom, stay upright. This has been helpful for me. I can see it working for so many different things. And it's just something that not a lot of people have in the gym. So we're lucky to have it here. Y'all have anything? Yeah, one thing I'd like to point out that he's doing, to get back to this there, it'd be very easy to have a knee flexion, hip flexion, and hyper stay in this position. So you know, yeah, see, see how he's, he's hyper extending his lower back, uh, compensating for, for hip uh, and posterior chain uh, engagement, rather than being in that nice extended neutral position right here. So be careful about that. The one thing I'd also say is, when you say about throwing a band around there as well, maybe that's that's next level. Yeah, so the next nice thing is, I, uh, for me and my athletes, I like to give progression to different movements. And so I've never actually seen this particular device before. I've seen similar things, but I like the way they're using it. It's a great idea that Don and the guys up here at Heavy Metal Fitness had. Uh, I just real quickly was like, hey, let's throw a band around there and get a little bit more angular resistance, make it even more uh, of a challenge on the posterior chain. But yeah, good shit. I also just want to add, Don and Mike coming at this from a strongman perspective. If you're looking to improve your squat, you have trouble, you can't activate that posterior chain, this is going to help just as much as it would for a long Anything where you can really get those hips, hips more and give a accessory movement in squat in particular, although all of these movements really have carryover to numerous things because think about the you know the requirements on a squat, you know, are requirements on a lot of other lists, neutral spine, having a, you know, a, a strong upper back, you know, keeping the all that kind of good stuff. So the one I'm gonna use is a unilateral movement, uh, I call it a dead stop front loaded lunge. Uh, it's kind of a basic yoga mat, but what we're going to use that for is spacing, okay? So when I'm referring to spacing, what I'm referring to is the spacing of your stride. So you're going to have, what you can do actually, there's a couple ways you can do it. A, start with your body weight if, you know, if this is a weak movement for you, especially unilaterally, you can just do your body weight. I like to load it for more advanced athletes. Double rack position with kettlebells, although you could also offload it with one kettlebell, or you can go just goblet style like so. Like I said, I like the front load because it really works the core engagement. So, knees are right at the edge of the yoga mat here. You want to have that nice strong rack position and tight. Okay, get your big air, brace that bicep. Get that spacing that I was referring to. Heel is right in front of the yoga mat. What you're going to really focus on is keeping that neutral spine and that core brace to keep a nice vertical torso as you come up. Okay, so big air. Dropping forward with the leg, and you're going to step backwards, getting that same positioning. Okay, so you got to step back a little bit more. Bring your leg back. This is going to help mobilize the hips as well. Do that spacing back. Shift that weight to the front leg. Big air brace. Dropping up and forward. Okay, so what is going to want to happen, potentially, if your core is not strong enough, or if you're not thinking about bracing enough, is you're going to get that leg up. And once you go to uh, you know, drive yourself up into the standing position, what's going to happen? back, chest is going to dive forward, and that's what's going to happen. So you're going to be kind of compensating for a lack of stability and strength in that front leg by kind of transferring the work to your posterior chain 
it's sort of good warning it up. So you can see how this has a carryover too. If staying vertical on your back squat is a problem. Okay, so one more time. Kettlebells front rack. Get your spacing. Big air. Up and forward. Always think about finishing with that glute punch and that neutral spot. I just really, I mean, this is the first time I, I saw it today. One of the things that really stuck out to me was that often when people have their legs back and doing lunges, you're going to see a lot of that lordosis, right? You're going to really be over, but in a sense, because of that front rack position, you have to have to feel stable and strong, you're going to have to essentially brace and pull those hips back under you so that you can move in the right way, which to me is just almost like a self-correcting mechanism, which Yeah, Ben and I talked about neutral spine in our last video, and just like you said, in order to do this, at least do it correctly, have to feel good. You gotta have that neutral spine. You gotta focus on that bracing. So, yeah, why not? So just some finishing thoughts regarding uh, a lot of these movements. For me, uh, these really play a wonderful role in being able to supplement, right, the lifts that you measure yourself by, right? That could be a wall, that could be a squat, or bench, whatever it's going to be. But ultimately, right, this is, this is more like the second or third step of this kind of pyramid if we're thinking about programming and uh, really making sure we're using the right movements. Ultimately, if we don't understand what our bodies are doing, if we don't have a mind-muscle connection, if we're too busy thinking about what's going on that day and all the busy stuff that we have to do, and we don't feel the bracing, if we don't feel our glutes, if we don't feel our hamstrings, if we don't feel our feet rooted into the ground, ultimately, these are just futile, and they won't help you in the, in the big picture anyway. So at the very least, um, these are super important, but ultimately making sure that you're going about this in the correct way really just um, overarches everything that anyone's going to say regarding uh, exercises, movements, and making sure that you can get stronger. Yeah, I mean, it's something that we actually all said uh, earlier when, when kind of trying to figure out exercise selection for this video was we're not looking to reinvent the wheel. You know, the human body has a couple basic concepts that you need to understand if you want to be using it and, and you know, kind of reaching your, your upper limits of abilities with your, with your own body. And just like you were saying, without that mind-body connection and really moving properly and having your focus be moving properly instead of moving weight, no matter how you want to do it. And I'm sure all three of us here have been you know, guilty of the ego lifting where I don't care how I put this weight up, I just need to put it up. Develops that movement pattern. Your, your, your body is just like you know any other machine where it has it has mechanisms, and the more you reinforce those proper mechanisms, the proper motor patterns, the movement patterns, the more you're going to have to think less about it once you do get under a bar for your squat or you know grab a bar for your deadlift or whatever it is. And so, with these accessory movements going a little bit lighter and focusing on moving properly rather than moving a heavy ass load, like that unilateral move that I showed, that lunge variation, you're not looking to load that and do max reps with it. You want to be doing higher reps, 10 to 15 per leg sort of thing, you know, to really feel that connection and, and feel that proper movement and engaging the right area. So if you're rushing through, like you said, think about what's going on with there, the, the fight you had with your girlfriend, not gonna, not, not gonna cut it. So make sure you're in the mental space to move correctly. Like I know a lot of us use this stuff as, you know, kind of a uh, band-aid or an anti-anxiety or, you know, kind of like a stress reliever, but you need to have enough of a focus so that you're moving correctly and, and gradually improving with your movement and not degrading your movement as you go. So I think that wraps it up for today. Next time we're going to come back with sumo deadlift or maybe an overhead movement. Yeah, I think we can get some upper body involved in. Yeah, so please stay tuned. Let us know what else you'd like to see. And thanks for watching.